Welcome to another video in which I'm going to be reviewing the books that I read in the past month while also attempting to make some art and doodle some stuff. Today I'm going to be drawing some characters from some of these books that I've read because I'm trying out like kind of different art styles and you know what a better way to draw characters than to just draw inspiration from books? We are drawing inspiration from books. Anyway, welcome to another video. We're just going to be talking about books and as always, I'm just going to be drawing again. I'm not like an artist. Okay, I don't make masterpieces, but that's not the point. The point is to just have fun. In the month of June, I read four books and I also DNF'd one book, which I just quickly want to mention at the beginning of this video. Oh my gosh, I just realized I forgot to put in my other earring. <laughs> okay. That's better. But before we go into the reviews of these books, let me bring you over to sponsor Leonie because this video is sponsored by Skillshare. Hello, today's video is kindly sponsored by Skillshare. If you're like me, there's always something that you would like to learn how to do, whether that is painting or how to take care of your plants correctly. And for these lifestyle skills, that's where Skillshare comes in. Skillshare is an online learning community for creatives where millions come together to take the next step in their creative journey. They offer thousands of inspiring classes on topics including illustration, design, photography, video, freelancing and more. For example, a while ago I switched to a new editing program for my videos and in order to quickly learn how to actually use it effectively, I watched the Skillshare class Advanced Video Editing with Adobe Premiere Pro 2020 by Jordi Vendeput and now I know all the useful keyboard shortcuts that I would have otherwise not known about. And if that hasn't convinced you yet, the first 1000 of my subscribers to click my link in the description will get a one month free trial of Skillshare so you can start exploring your creativity today. It's free, so go get yourself a summer full of creativity and learning. Back to the video. Okay, welcome back. The first character that I'm gonna draw is a character from Neuromancer because it's a sci-fi novel and sci-fi novels usually have really cool character design. And I'm gonna be drawing the female main character, more like a rather empty love interest, but she has pretty cool character design because she has these like glasses imprinted into her eye sockets. Sounds pretty cool. Before we get to this book, I just want to talk about a book that I DNF'd. So in one of my vlogs, I think the one in which I was replacing my screen time with reading time, I started listening to the audiobook of How to Do Nothing. This is a non-fiction book about how we are basically always having on our, on our attention on something always doing something and then we've kind of unlearned to do nothing basically. So the reason I DNF this is not because I didn't think it was a good book. I do think a lot of people would really enjoy this book and that it would mean a lot to a lot of people. But it's one of those books where after the first chapter I was like, okay, I kind of understand this. I understand the message and I agree with it. Sometimes, and I don't know if this is like a very controversial statement, but I feel like, oh, I'm messing up the eyes. Anyway, doesn't matter. <laughs> Certain nonfiction books could have just been essays. It's like, I understood it after the first chapter and then you just know the rest of the book is just going to be more stories, more examples, more anecdotes that are just going to drive home the exact same message. And I was like, yeah, I already agree with this message and that we should indeed take life a little slower and not be on like social media and just like we don't need to be productive all the time etc i already agree with that i think that's a great message but i don't want to listen to a whole more eight hours of it so that's why i dnf'd it i don't think it's a bad book if this was on your tbr give it a try but just not for me right now you know drawing these characters is like a kind of a challenge for me because i know that if i mess up i still am gonna have to show it in the video and i'm not liking where this is going right now oh well 
Okay, moving on to the first book that I finished this month. It is Neuromancer by William Gibson. It is a sci-fi cyberpunk book from the 80s. Cyberpunk is kind of like the brand of sci-fi. It's kind of like The Matrix, Blade Runner, the neon lights, very much about themes of social hierarchies, lower classes, capitalism, etc. I like cyberpunk in movies a lot, so I wanted to give a book a try. And unfortunately, I didn't really... well... Mm, <laughs> I guess we have to conclude that this just wasn't really for me. Let me just first explain what this is about. We follow our main character, Case, who's like this hacker slash bounty hunter, and he's going on this mission with another girl, Molly, who I'm drawing right now, to retrieve like an old, very important artificial intelligence that he kind of needs to not steal, but like secure. It's super high paced. The plot is full of action. And when I say full of action, I mean non-stop things are happening constantly all the time, which was surprisingly, I didn't really expect this, but this was kind of a deal breaker for me because the pacing was just too high for me to the point that everything was happening so all over the place and the plot was just like jumping from point to point to point that I just completely lost it after like 10 pages. I already didn't know what was happening anymore. If you've seen my video in which I read intimidating books, you see my entire breakdown <laughs> over reading this book. I think the bottom line is that most of the things that were happening, I just genuinely didn't really understand what was happening. Probably should have read this book a lot more like carefully and slowly than I did. And I completely lost all the details. It's one of those books where you're constantly bombarded with new words and new technological stuff and, and names and things that are happening and they're barely if even explained like things get explained in like maybe one sentence that's really easy to read over and then you're just expected to just remember what that thing was for the entirety of the book and i just don't <laughs> i'll just admit that here i just don't like I will forget. I just will forget. And if something is explained in like one sentence, there's a really big chance that I'll just like accidentally miss it and then never understand what's going on. And that's what happened to this book. So it's kind of my own fault that I didn't quite understand it because I probably didn't read it as carefully as I should have. But the reason that I wasn't really reading it very carefully was because I kind of didn't really care about the characters. The characters in this book in, I think, what is classic 80s sci-fi fashion weren't very well developed. I didn't really care about them. They were pretty two-dimensional. I noticed that my favorite parts in the book were the few parts that were a little bit slower and we see our main character like grappling with the death of his wife and those were like the few moments i was like really engrossed because those were some nice character moments but other than that really didn't care about the characters i mean i'm drawing molly because she has pretty cool character design but she was also not developed at all she was just like a cool badass girl love interest and that was it i don't know if i'm liking this drawing at all i just kind of felt like this was one of those books where a lot of like technological things and words are put in there for like the the sci-fi vibe but I think I prefer sci-fi when it just like takes one or two things and really goes into them. For example this book actually started the idea of cyberspace and the matrix like appears in this book and i would have liked it if it like just focused on those things and like really went into it explained exactly how it works and what the consequences of it are etc but it kind of in my opinion got a little bit lost in like the sheer amount of technological stuff that was going on in this book but that's just my opinion maybe sci-fi books are just not my thing I don't know. And another thing that I noticed about this book is that the writing style was something that I was just really not used to. And I don't know if this is again just like an 80s thing. Sometimes I was reading the book and I noticed that a plot twist had happened two pages later. You know, like I'm very used to reading books. I think most modern books do it. Is they are written in a way 
that kind of slows down and the tone changes if something really shocking happens or if we get into a sad situation. Like I'm very used for the writing style to kind of ebb and flow with what's happening in the book. And this book doesn't do that. It kind of feels like it's written in grayscale, like everything is given the exact same emphasis, the exact same tone. And so <laughs> when like really shocking things would happen, like big plot twists, I would almost not notice them because the writing style glossed over them as if nothing interesting had just happened. But I, th I think that's just maybe like an 80s writing style thing. Maybe it's just a William Gibson thing, but that was very jarring for me and I was not used to it. So the bottom line is not my thing. I did finish my Motley drawing. Not really how I wanted it to turn out, but I think it looks pretty cool. This is how I saw her in my head when I was reading it. And then <laughs> the last three books that I read this month are a testament of me falling into the whole that is romance books. <laughs> and the, the last three books that I read this month are all just romance books because I'm really in the mood for some fluffy, duffy, happy feelings. And I'm really excited to talk about it because romance is a genre I don't really read often. I've tried it before and it didn't really seem to be my thing, but since I read Talia Hibbert's books, I was like, maybe I do like romance. And I've been reading some romance books this month and I can assure you that yes indeed I do like romance. <laughs> they weren't all equally great in the romance books that I read this month but let's just get into them and I'm gonna be drawing one of the characters from the last book that we'll talk about because I can't draw one character per book I can't draw that fast. So. The first romance book that I read this month is the infamous, the overhyped, the everyone loves this book, Red Wild Red, ugh, wow, I can't even speak. <laughs> Red, white, and royal blue. The romance book with the most ridiculous premise, and that is that the first son of the United States, fictional person, falls in love with the prince of England, a fictional prince of England. Isn't this just wonderful? <laughs> they hate each other. They don't like each other, especially the first son, Alex. He doesn't have it with Henry and his weird British ways. <laughs> but then in order to, you know, like keep the press happy, to make it seem like they're having really great international relationships, they're kind of forced by their family to go on vacation together to show the presses that they get along well. And in the meantime, they kind of fall for each other. And of course, they have to keep it a secret because no one is allowed to know, obviously, that the Prince of England is dating the first son of the United States. It's wonderful. I enjoyed this. Lives up to this hype. It took me a really long time to pick up this book, honestly, because I didn't think I w it would be the kind of book for me. I was afraid that it was going to be too fluffy and happy for my tastes, which I mean, of course, I read romance because I want to be happy, but I don't like it if it's like a little like too over the top happy. This actually isn't that. It's like that perfect middle ground. I don't know what it is about this book, but it's like Casey McQuiston, the author, has put this like like magic sauce in this book, just a secret ingredient that just made me just like genuinely smile so often while I was listening to the audiobook. Because everything is so happy, so funny, without ever really getting over the top fluffy, because there still are a lot of problems and a lot of things that the main characters are grappling with. Like the main character, Alex, the first son, is grappling with his sexuality. Of course, Henry is having to struggle with the fact that being a gay prince in England is not really appreciated. The new president elections are going on in the United States. Because the thing with this book is that I think a lot of people have also said that it's like a little too kind of like wishful thinking because, you know, it's a fictional version of our reality where the, the president is like a woman and the first son is half Mexican and it's kind of this like progressive dream. And I was afraid that it was gonna be too over the top, but it wasn't because there still were a lot of problems in this world that we also have in like the real world. I was afraid it was gonna be the kind of books that just pretends that 
problems don't exist and it's kind of like in denial but it wasn't that it was, there were a lot of political problems that still existed in this alternate reality except we kind of won you know we've overcome them and that actually felt like the perfect type of escapism and i can understand that to some people that's a little bit over the top but i actually really enjoyed kind of like reveling in this idea that we can overcome these problems at some point not in a way that's like just complete denial but more in a way that's kind of hopeful you know i loved alex the main character the uh the first son oh my god i'm drawing hair i'm so bad at drawing hair Ooh, i'm just doing something Whee! trust the process <laughs> however our love interest henry he didn't really do it for me i think it's because we didn't really get to know him that well like he did remain a little bit one-dimensional and i honestly really think that this book would have benefited a lot from dual perspectives i actually thought that it was gonna be dual perspectives but we just get alex's point of view and i mean it's great because i love alex with all my heart he's a wonderful kind of like cocky but super charming narrator but because of that i never really felt anything for henry all in all i would highly recommend this book it's just serotonin straight into the brain i don't think it's gonna do anything if i say i recommend this book because everyone says that um but yeah i'm just here to add to the hype of a red white and really blue <laughs> then a book that i actually just finished i listened to it in, on audiobook is the unhoneymooners by christina lauren another very popular romance books i'm very aware of the fact that i'm getting into romance by just reading like the top of the top recommendations so i feel like it's only gonna go downhill from here <laughs> anyway i read the very hyped and loved the unhoneymooners by christina lauren this is a fake dating romance love that <laughs> actually i think all the romances that i read this month are kind of fake dating in like some way but we follow our main character what's her name i already forgot her name what is her name it's because we get the first person perspective so then you never actually get to see her name olive that's her name we follow olive who goes to the wedding of her sister and everyone gets food poisoning from the buffet except for her because she doesn't she's allergic to shellfish and her nemesis ethan who didn't want to eat from the buffet but the bride had this honeymoon that they won that they have to go on and they can't change any of their dates so instead of the bride and the groom they sent the only two people that aren't sick meaning our main character and her nemesis ethan on this honeymoon together to maui where they're gonna have a beautiful fantastic romantic time except they hate each other oh what could happen what could possibly ha what could possibly go wrong what could possibly happen between these people in this situation <laughs> and when they get there they kind of have to pretend that they're married so that no one finds out so it's just the perfect fake dating scenario there's so many great tropes in this book we have the hate to love the fake dating like a massage scene really nice very fluffy very romantic and a lot of fun this one i didn't really enjoy as much though as other romances that i read it was still good but well for starters i didn't really like the love interest ethan I thought he was just a little bit generic character, cocky character who's like really handsome and secretly has a soft side, you know. There was nothing really that distinguished him from many other love interests that I've read in my life, so that was a little disappointing to me. Okay, I know this shouldn't matter, but like, for example, this book is Fade to Black, which I mean, for some people, that might actually be a reason to prefer this kind of romance book. But personally, if I'm going to read an adult romance book and they're going to have all this tension build up and then you're just going to do a fate of black, uh, you know, not what I would prefer. Let me just say it like that. And I also didn't really like the way this book ended. Okay, so let's talk about the, the the structure of most romance books you know like the, the majority of the book is just like kind of the, the the way the characters fall in love with each other and they kind of get to know each other there's a lot of tension build up and then at some point in the book they get together and this is a critical point in a romance book because sometimes when they get together that's where the story 
stops being interesting, like I suddenly lose all interest, whereas other romance books are really good at keeping the tension up and keeping the drama going, keeping the romance going, even though they've already like admitted to each other that they liked each other. And this book, first I really felt like it was romance-wise, it was really faltering, like it really stopped being interesting the moment they got together, to me. But then, like, <laughs> Christina Lauren just like whipped in a shit ton of drama. Like, like good drama. Not like, oh no, the love interests are fighting with each other over something really stupid just to get, you know, a third act breakup in there, you know? No, there was like family drama going on. <laughs> For example, in Red, White and Royal Blue, there's also like new drama going on in the third act of the book, but you kind of know how it's gonna end. With most romances, you know exactly what's going to happen. In The Unhoneymooners, I didn't know. I was on the edge of my seat. I was like, what's gonna happen with this family drama? Who's gonna turn out to be right? Like, I was really genuinely wondering what the author was gonna do. In the end, I was kind of disappointed in her choice because I feel like the main character didn't really grow in this book. Like, we we're presented with one of her flaws. Okay. Let me just say that I was hoping she was about to overcome one of her flaws, but that didn't happen. And that really disappointed me. So overall, The Unhoneymooners, definitely cute, definitely fluffy. Not my favorite romance book that I've read, because I think that the characters, especially the love interest, could have been a little bit more original, and I think that the romance kind of like sizzled out at a lot of points. Oh no. That fall broke the tip of my pen. <laughs> I don't have anything else with this thickness. Okay, and then the last book that I want to talk about is a YA romance, and that is She Drives Me Crazy. I learned this from a friend, uh, so she took the dust jacket off, but this is what the cover looks like. This is a YA high school romance about kind of like a jock girl, like a basketball girl, who falls in love with the cheerleader. Just like Red, White and Royal Blue, this book is kind of ridiculous in the way that it's just like a typical of like, oh, the jock girl, unpopular jock girl, sporty girl falls in love with the cheerleader, like the prettiest homecoming queen girl to school. I'm making a sketch of the main character, Scotty. Basically, Scotty, our basketball girl, gets into kind of like a car crash with Irene, the cheerleader, and they have to go to school every day. They have to carpool together because one of the cars is being completely broken. One thing leads to another. They come to the conclusion that it would be pretty great for their reputation if they started fake dating. So they start to fake dating, even though they absolutely hate each other. So we have hate to lovers. It's not technically rivals to lovers, but these two girls definitely have rivals to lovers energy. It's fake dating. There's only one bed trope, sleepover trope, you know, the whole thing where you go to parties things happen at parties trope. <laughs> really fun and great, has the same kind of magic sauce that Red, White and Royal Blue have, except in kind of a YA style. I will say that like the characters definitely do not talk like real people, especially at the beginning. This was a little bit jarring to me because it just really didn't feel real, but this gets better uh, throughout the book and you know, I was totally ready to just be enjoying just like a fun, easy breezy YA, but it actually got like surprisingly meaningful towards the end. We have like our main character really struggling with her breakup and getting over her ex and what it means to leave a relationship and whether relationships, past relationships were good for you or not and like how hard it can be to let go of someone even though you know that maybe they weren't good for you and that was like really nice and very well explored and like these characters really handle each other well. I really liked that the main character Scotty was very flawed like throughout the book. She just does really dumb things <laughs> that constantly get her in trouble but but not in an annoying way, in a way that you just know this is a flawed character and I like that because I don't often see that in YA contemporary books and like the love interest constantly calls out the main character for her bullshit. Very well done. I really liked it. So if you are looking for just like a fun contem YA contemporary romance, female-female romance, this one 
very good. To me, this is like what top YA is. Fun stuff, but also very meaningful, well done exploration of the things we feel when we are young and stupid. <laughs> okay, this is my drawing of Scotty. I think it turned out quite well. I think it's nice. I do like this uh, this drawing style that I'm trying out here. Let me share with you the books that I'm currently reading. First of all, I am <laughs> making my way through Meditations by Marcus Aurelius. This is the diary of the Roman Emperor Marcus Aurelius, which is full of like everything that he learned, little wisdoms, little thoughts that he had, ideas. Very interesting trying to make my way through it through this month. And I'm also currently reading Once and Future. This is a King Arthur retelling in space. I'm not very far in, but so far it is again kind of ridiculous, not very well written, but very fun. So I'm excited to finish this and see what I think of this and talk about it next month in my wrap up. Let me know what your favorite book was this month. Uh, I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to see more videos like this, ah. everything is breaking today. <laughs> anyway, if you want to see more videos from me, consider subscribing and leaving a like if you enjoyed this video. You can follow me on my social media at the bookneo if you want to see more of me. I really hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you soon in another one. Goodbye.